Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Glory Tabernacle Prayer Line, together with the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry. We are now in the portion of sharing the word, and before we call on Sister Cynthia, let's open up in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this prayer line live. We welcome everyone tonight, and we thank you for the opportunity that you give us to pray for your people, Lord God. Lord, tonight we ask for your anointing on Sister Cynthia as she shares the word tonight, Lord God. Lord, let us hear from you tonight through her, Lord God. And Lord, let your name be glorified and honored. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen, Michael and Sister Cynthia. Good evening, brethren. Good evening. Good evening, all. Hallelujah. We thank God. We thank God for another Monday like this day. And we thank God that we can be on the prayer line once more, all to the glory of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So before I deal with the topic of tonight, let us have a short word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, our Heavenly Father, Lord God Almighty, God, we want to just surrender to you again tonight, all, all, all. And we ask, oh, Father God, that you will take over. May your blood cleanse us, cleanse me, O oh Lord God, and pray that you would use me as your vessel this evening to speak to your people. Thank you again for the day that has gone by, almost gone by. Thank you for your every provision, and thank you for the presence of the Holy Spirit who will be with us here again to teach us all. For your glory's sake, in Jesus' name, amen. 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 Thank you. Uh, last week we dealt with the topic, the unfailing love of God. And this week, we have, and we use the text John 3.16 for that. And this week, we are going to revisit that statement again. The unfailing, this week it is, the unfailing love of God to man in action. So I should rather be the unfailing love of God in action towards man. And we would read, I, I, I got my filling, or I got my directives from First John, the book of First John, chapter 4 and verse 18. And I would read this for you. This would be the only text we would read over the line. There are the other verses you would read when you have the time. First John 4, 18 tells us, there is no fear in the love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. Because fear had torment. He that uh, feareth is not made perfect in love. There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear had torment. He that feareth is not made perfect in love. Amen. Thanks be to the O Lord and God. So we'll expand that statement, that verse. And see. last week we saw that God's love was unfailing. <clears throat> never fails. And this week, and so we all know that God is love, and we hear God, God tells us over and over throughout his holy scriptures to man that he is love. Indeed, God is love. One of his greatest attributes, if not the most important attribute, is that God is love. And so we know that God is a God of love. But we never want to look at the other side of the coin, 
that God is a God of justice. Not only God is a God of love, but God's love or God chastens when he loves. In fact, if you are chastened by your parents, <clears throat> it's only because they love you. They want you to go their way, which is the right way. And so God loves us, and he does chasten us. But we are not able to reconcile to the idea that God can chasten us. For all we know and we want to believe on here is that God is love. And this is so. God is love. So we're going to look through a few examples in the scriptures to see where God does chasten even though he loves. And in the scripture we learn tonight is the verse we learn, First John 4, verse 18. He, it says that uh, there is no fear in love. What is it saying here to us? That if I love, and let us keep it to our level, if I love my husband, or if I love my wife, there should be no fear. I should be able to trust him with all that I have. We're talking about genuine love. We're not talking about what you have to be just for because of this reason and that reason. But we're talking about when God put two people together in love, in, in marriage, it is that each one of them will surrender themselves to each other. There should be no fear of anything. No fear that the man will run away from you or remarry. Remarriage should not even cross your thoughts. No fear that he is undermining you or saving some of his money away from yours or, or whatever. There is no fear. You have surrendered yourself to him or to her, and you totally trust that someone. So too, God is saying to us that there is no fear. If we say that we love him, there can be no fear. And if there is fear, then there is torment, meaning that your conscience will be troubling you if you say that you love God and there is fear. And the word of God tells us that if this is the situation, then that love is not made perfect. It's not perfect if there is fear. If you love with your husband and wife and there is fear, is undermining, whatever, whatever, it's not perfect love. And God demands from us perfect love because he loves us with a perfect mindset. So we're going to look briefly at some characters in the world in the Bible where love was professed, love was stated, and it was not carried out. And when we, so we can look there are examples given, like I say, we're not going to read all these texts because of time. But there is, when we're looking at God's unfailing love towards man and God's action, the unfailing love towards man must be tested. That is the, the, the topic. God's unfailing love towards man must be tested. First John four eighteen. And if you're looking at Bible characters and we have in Mark twenty one, Mark ten twenty one, there is this situation here where Jesus was speaking to someone who had a lot, a rich young man. And 
Jesus, the Bible says, then Jesus, beholding him, loved him. This is Mark 10, 21. Jesus, beholding him, loved him and said unto him, because he wanted to know what he should do to inherit the kingdom of God. And Jesus said, one thing thou lackest, go thy way, sell whatsoever thou hast, and give to the poor, and thou shalt have treasure in heaven, and come take up thy cross, and follow me. And the verse 22 tells us, this young man, or this man was very sad, and went away grieved, because he had great possession. The text of the verse tells us, the perfect love has no fear. And so this young man or this man was not willing to gamble his love or, or misplace his priorities, so he thought. All he knows is that he has all this amount of wealth and to give it up for what? For what? Something that he cannot see or know nothing about? That's because he had no faith yet, because we know faith is the substance of things not seen and the evidence of things that we have. So here is this young man walking away from Jesus and eternal life because his love was not perfect. And so he, he was saying that he loved God. That's why he came to Jesus. He loved God, but there was something missing in his life. That's why he came to Jesus. And when he was told what the requirement was, he thought he loved God. For him, he loves God. He's doing everything that is good in the sight of him and man. But Jesus said, you lack one thing. You need to go and get rid of all that and come and follow me. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Another example I can give to you is, we find it uh, in the book of Luke 12.33. And Luke 12.33, let me read what it says here. Hallelujah. Are you there with me? Yes, Sister Cynthia. Uh -huh, okay. Luke twelve thirty three, and it reads, yes, the same, sell that, this is another situation where God, Jesus is speaking to this man here, and he says to him, sell that he have, and give, um, provide yourselves bags, and give alms. Provide yourselves bags which was not, which waxed not old, a treasure in the heaven, heavens, that falleth not, where no thief, where no thief, uh, Approach it, neither moth corrupt it, moth. So here is another situation again with treasures, worldly treasures of the heart, and even uh, physically. And Jesus is saying that you have to get rid of these treasures and lay up treasures because all the treasures here, they can be stolen, they can rot, or whatever, but when you lay up treasures in heaven, nothing, there is, there is nothing to destroy it. Hallelujah. And Jesus went on to say in the verse 34, For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The fear, again, our, our verse First John 4.18, the fear, the fear that we would lose our treasures, 
misplacing our priorities and thinking that our treasures here on earth where we can see and look after them is safer and is is better than seeking treasures or taking treasures and placing it in heaven, meaning becoming spiritual and running after the spiritual things. That is why Jesus said to the first one, take up thy cross and follow me. Hallelujah. So we are looking at Bible characters who said and professed that they love God. And God, when God put them to the test, there was holding back. There was not total and complete love for God and the things of God. We have in the book of uh, Acts 5 2, there's another example of Ananias and Sapphira who they were following up with the apostles, the disciples. They loved the things of God. They loved all that was taking place in the church, if I may say, or in the gatherings and the fellowship. They enjoyed it. They had a lot of love, a lot of joy and were peace. But then when it came that they were asked, because they also had to go and sell whatever they have and come and bring it back so that they can even up and give those who didn't have. And they willingly did that. But their love was divided. Because although they went to do as they were asked, I guess they were thinking in their mind with all this, amount of wealth, are we going to bring this much back to the disciples so that they can take it and and share it amongst the people? Well, we have worked so hard for this. That's not fair. Nevertheless, we did say that we are going to sell. So that's what they did. They sold, but did not bring back all uh all, all that they received for selling their goods. They brought back only a part of it. And I guess that part was so much that they thought, well, when the disciples and they saw this, they would be satisfied with the amount that they were bringing. And they left behind quite a bit of their treasure. What they were bringing, they thought it was a lot. It was probably full, the, the, the disciples and they, and they will go for that. But these are men of God. Not only that, the Holy Ghost knew their actions, saw their actions. And when they came before the disciples and when asked, are these all the treasures? Is this all the monies that you sold your lands for? And they said, yes. And with that lie, so we're talking about God's love, the other side of God's love. God chastened them. And this was so severe that they both lost their lives. God just did away with them for saying telling, lying to the Holy Ghost. And they lied to the Holy Ghost because their heart and the love for God was still divided. The Lord God said, when we know the first commandment, this is what God says in his first commandment, that thou shalt love the Lord thy God with thine whole heart and with all thine soul, and with all thine mind, and with all thine strength. All thine strength, meaning your labor, all your labor must go back to God. God is the one who gave you the strength and the ability to gain wealth. And with all your, your, your heart, in your heart should reside only God. Not half love for God and half love for treasures. No. God said his first commandment is to love the Lord thy God. And so these are the examples, the previous examples I gave to you to the rich young men 
who when asked by Jesus to surrender all that they have, they could not do it. Because in their hearts was still that space for the things for themselves, a little treasure for themselves. Treasure for heaven, yes, but we must reserve a little for the self. And so we have today, you know, we have, this is the contest with man and God. God's love and man's love. God loves us wholeheartedly without any reservation. Look what he did when he decided to give us his son to come in and stand in the gap to redeem us. We can never do it. But God is God, and God could have done it any other way. But he has, he wants to prove to us, and he did. He proved so profound is his love for us. He decided to, re, he decided to release his son to us to come in and stand in the gap, to come in and be the redeemer, because we could never do it. Self will always stand in the way. And so this is something that we need to examine for ourselves. We keep saying, it's not we, meaning myself, we love God. But when it comes to the, to the challenge, when it comes to the test, we find that there's still reservations. We have not fully surrendered or we hesitate to fully surrender. What if I go and the Lord sends me a mission and say I need to sell up my property and all that I have and go overseas? I don't know where I'm going. I don't even have it sleeping in the forest amongst the whatever, whatever. And I have struggled. I've been to college. I have gained my degrees. I have my good job. And now this is what the Lord is asking of me to do. I'm not sure I want to do that. But you have said that you love the Lord God. And his word even warns you. It's not only tells you. He warns you that you need to love him with everything. Your soul, your mind, and your strength. And so if we cannot, and then it's not something that takes place uh, suddenly. Just as sanctification grows on you, you become holier and holier and holier as you practice. So to surrender ourselves to God's love and love in God, it takes, it takes a while. It's something that we have to work at. Can I really surrender? Do we say, oh, I love my husband more than I love my wife? I love Jesus more than my wife. I love Jesus more than my husband, and so on and so forth. Is that really so? Because sometimes when we are put to the test to do something for God or do something for the family, which is the priority? Anyway, it should always be God. It must always be God. And... I want to give you another example again, and this is a classic example of self, the love of self before God. When we look at the case of David, and all through the scriptures we know that David is a man of God. God loves David, and David loves God. And we know how how much War, how much he has done to prove his love for God. And as I said, the word of God says, as soon he loved he kissed And a day was going to come that David's love for God would have been tested. And we all know the story that happened. He failed. He failed miserable because he went and sinned with Bathsheba. The flesh had overcome him. And that is by the first commandment again, love the Lord thy God with all thine heart. In your heart, 
there must be nothing, as we just said. No man, no woman should occupy that space. But Sheba should never have come in front of the love of God in David's case. And we know he loved, but he had not totally surrendered that little part of the self. And so his love for God was incomplete. And he paid, we know the story, he paid a heavy price. He almost lost his kingdom. He paid a heavy price for that. The hand of God chastens. God is love, but God also chastens. We see also, yes, God chastens us. He loves us. And why does he chasten us? He chastens us to bring us, to bring back order into our life. If God loves us, if our parents, our natural parents love us and allow us to just go our own ways and think the way we wish to think, what, what happens? There is chaos. That child becomes a misfit for society and becomes a whole lot of problems for society. All because the parents uh, spared the rod, so the Bible says, and did not chasten the child. And so it is with our Heavenly Father. He does. He loves. He loves. But he chastens us. And he has, or if he does not chasten us, then we are not sons. We are bastards. We are not the sons that he's, that is spoken of in First John, in John 1, 12. Then we are bastards. But God loves us. And so he has a chance to chasten us because our love is not as deep and total as it ought to be for him. And so... God may decide to chase in you, which is a very hard thing to take, but it does. We must know that God is God. Fear God. This is what he says. Fear God and keep his commandments. So God can chase in you through a sickness, through a disease, poverty, natural disaster, and so on. God can choose to chase in you just so that he brings back order into your life and we do not have a chaotic society, so to speak. All that God has planned and left has to be in order, even you yourselves. And so God's love is unfailing because he does not change. Numbers 23, 19 tell us that he is not a man that he should lie. And he does not change. He does not change. And so his love for us is unfailing. He's not changing. What he has done for us is not never to be undone. When he gave us his son, when his son was sacrificed on our behalf, when his son stood in the way so that we can now do the, 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 the reconstruction or or the gate, the gateway is now open that we can all go in freely. That is after we have repented, then we can go. That is after we have been baptized, then we can go. And that is after we have received the giftings of the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. Whom God loveth, he chastens. Hallelujah. So this is what we have tonight. We are looking at God's unfailing love. But on the flip side of the coin, God's unfailing love, we've seen God's unfailing love in action as he chastens those whom he loves. Hallelujah. Let us pray. God loves us. Hallelujah. 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 So, We need to examine ourselves. God is a jealous God. He says it over and over. And perhaps you you or me may be thinking, okay, I'm doing okay, I'm all right. But there might be something that we are not doing right. We're probably not spending enough time before 
before him and with him. We are probably mm, slipping away silently into the world again. We are probably not having our priorities correct. God said that I'm a jealous God. And so all our efforts now as sons and daughters of his is to please him, to love him with all our hearts and minds and strength. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, here we are again, O oh God. We are studying about you in your word that you have given unto us. Lord, apart from us being sons and daughters, being born again, Lord, we want to be that signet, O oh God, of the Bible. When others see us, when the world see us, they will know that we have the love of Christ in our hearts. We would demonstrate with our own lives to those around us that it is you, Lord God, who matters. You must confess. So when the sinner who would reach for his, his, for his cigarette first when he, or his coffee when he gets up in the morning or the alcoholic will reach out for a drug or the, the drug addict will reach out for a fix because that's where their priority is, because that's their first love. Oh, God, but we, your sons and daughters, oh, God, when our love is to put you first, we are seeking your face in everything and all things. We are praising you all the time because you are one. There's much to be praised, to, to give you praise about. We will be loving you. We will be singing songs unto you, O God. And there will be no reservations in our hearts for all, for anything of the world or ourselves. All totally sold out to you. O God, this we cannot do on our own. So we surrender tonight and we ask, whatever is wrong, fix it, O God. Fix that which is not right in our lives. Fix that which is not right in our thinking, in our hearts that we have harboring and only you alone can see. Fix it, O oh God. Your word let us know that you are a God of mercy. You are a merciful God. So we want to just thank you tonight again. Lord, as the clock, the days are getting shorter, the time of your coming draws near. Lord, we ask him, that we should not fail the test, O oh God. Let us not go through all this and yet not meet your standard. So we ask you, O oh God, to cause us to examine ourselves daily, 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 and repent, repent hourly. We've got to make it, O oh God. Your unfailing love, it does chase me. So chasten us, O oh God, where it is needed. Where we know that your hand is a hand of mercy. Yes, there is judgment, but there is mercy along with your judgment. We want to let you know how much we love you tonight. Oh, Father, we love you, Lord. We love you, Jesus. We give you thanks again for that which you have done for us. In Jesus' name, I have prayed. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Our word Amen. tonight uh, was taken from First John 4, verse 18, the title of the message, The Unfailing Love of God in Action Towards Man Must Be Tested. Hallelujah. And she gave us a lot of examples about this unfailing love hallelujah if you want okay. to hear the full message once more we are on the website glory tabernacle prayer meeting dot blogspot dot com you can hear all the messages in that website 
Thank you once again, Sister Cynthia, and we go on with our prayer line. We are now in the portion of taking your prayer requests, praise report, even testimonies. Once again, this is Glory Tabernacle Prayer Line together with the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry. We are broadcasted globally tonight. To all our listeners here and abroad, the line is open for you. May we have the first prayer request? Anybody on the line with a prayer request? May call on 718-416-4463. Good evening. Do you have any prayer requests? Who is this? Rosemary. <laughs> oh, Rosemary. <laughs> Do you have any prayer requests, for Sister Rosemary? I'm sorry. <laughs> That's okay. Um, yes, I have one for, for my brother Nick. It's I can almost despair that he, I'm not, but I'm continually pray, continually praying for him because he's. He's not saved, and no matter what I do, sometimes I think he's actually goading me. Uh, like in other words, I talk to him about the Lord and all, and and then just when I think that I, he's listening, he comes up with something stupid like reincarnation, and then I say it's appointed unto man once to die, and after that mm-hmm. the judgment, and then I can go on, and he just doesn't listen. What do you do with a man who's 87 years old? How could you put your life in jeopardy like that? I said, you know, this is not like buying a pair of shoes or a house. I said, this is your eternity where you're going to spend it. So I just would like prayer, please, for him again, Nick. But Nick. Uh, I, someday the Lord is going to just, well, there's big revival coming, the biggest we've ever had in the world. And I'm sure that he will uh, he'll be saved from that. I know he will. Amen. Thank yes. Thank you. All right, Sister Rosemary. Okay. We will uh, lift up your brother Nick and also anyone on the prayer line whose uh, loved ones maybe in the family is not saved. And so we will lift up all those who doesn't know the Lord yet. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you gave us through this India. And, Lord, we pray that the word has blessed and encouraged your people tonight. Lord, we also pray for Sister Rosemary's brother, Nick, Lord God, who's not saved, that, Lord, you would touch his heart and bring salvation to him, Lord God. Let him know that you're a God that loves him and cares Lord God. And Lord, we also pray, Lord God, for anyone who needs salvation, that Lord, you would give them a saving knowledge of who you are, Lord Jesus. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would save our friends, our families, Lord God. Let them come to know you, Lord Jesus, personally, Lord God, that Lord, you would reveal yourself to them, Lord God, that Lord, Only you, Lord God, would be their priority, Lord. And, Lord, you would be the one, Lord, to work on their behalf, Lord God. Lord, we also pray for Sister Rosemary that you would bring complete healing and restoration. We also pray that whatever unspoken need she may have, Lord God, that, Lord, you would be the one to answer them, Lord. And tonight, Lord God... We just want to thank you, Lord, for loving us unconditionally, Lord God, that, Lord, no matter what we do, God, your love is unconditional, Lord God. We may not be faithful. We may 
not love you the same way, Lord God, but you continue to love us. You continue to move on our behalf, Lord God. And Lord, tonight we just want to thank you for this radio broadcast. We thank you for Evangelist Mike from Consuming Fire Radio Ministries that gives us the opportunity to pray, Lord God. And Lord, we thank you for our leadership, Bishop Mel and Pastor Marina, that Lord, continue to use them mightily to spread the good news of the gospel, Lord, through this broadcast, Lord God. And Lord, tonight, thank you, Lord, for every prayer request that will be answered tonight, Lord God. And Lord... Um, we just want to thank you, Lord, for every silent listener, every prayer intercessor that will lift up the needs of your people tonight, Lord God. G-O-D is L-O-V-E. G-O-D is L-O-V-E. God is love. God is love, G-O-D is L-O-V-E. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Sister Thank Queen. You. Thank you, Sister Rosemary. Thank you. Bless you. God bless you. Thank you, Sister Claire. Let's go on. And anybody else with a prayer request? Father God, we thank you for sending Jesus to redeem this world and for saving us. Forgive, uh, forgive us, Lord, for lack of love. Help us always to remember that we are able to love only because you, love, you first love us. There is no limit, Lord, to your love. It is from everlasting to everlasting. Hallelujah. Help us to love, give, and serve in your manner, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord, for your knitting us together with other believers. Your love gives us a purpose for living and for always leading us to joy. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. As you live in us, Lord, may love become our nature, too. And we thank you, Lord, for dying for us, for saving us, for making us heir of your kingdom, Lord God. We give you all the glory tonight and the praise in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Anybody else in the prayer line with a prayer request? Yes, I have some prayer requests. Um, for Evangelist Mike, for his computer to be repaired, that he would be able to do the audio, and also um for finances and um his house. He needs a house for him and his family. So that he wouldn't have to rent anymore, but have a house of his own. Thank you. Thank you, Sister Claire. And anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request? Yes. I we to lift up. We have two people who are away from from us right now, we want we wish to continue to lift up Sister Margaret who went home on vacation to her country. We oh. want to lift up Sister Juliet trustfully that all is well with her. And we want to lift up Sister Connie, the Sister Connie who went down to Seattle, Washington. Mm -hmm. And all these who have made these new moves away from us. We pray for God's uh tender mercies and opportunities and favors towards them as they away from the land. Amen, amen. May I call on Sister Chief? Is 
Mr. Chief, are you on? Yeah, I muted. Yeah, I think she's on mute. Mr. Chief, are you on? May, may I call on Sister Lila? Hi, Sister Marina. Hi, Sister Lila. Uh, can we lift up Sister Cynthia's prayer request? And also the request of Sister Claire? Uh huh. Okay, for Evangelist Mike, finance. Okay. Uh -huh. So for. Um, Margaret, who is on vacation, and Sister Juliet, that everything is well with her. She also went on vacation to Guyana, and also Sister Connie, who moved to Seattle, and everyone else who are uh, going on vacation or came back. Brother Manny is back. So, um, Good evening, Rita. Good evening, Rita. To everyone who has a special needs, okay? Can we include Sister Rita? Thank you. All right. Thank you. Okay. Um, Heavenly Father, thank you once again, Lord, for uh, bringing us once again together in this prayer line tonight, Lord God. Thank you for the opportunity that we can do and give you thanks, Lord God, for all your faithfulness and love towards us. May we live up to you, Lord God. Evangelist Mike say request uh, for financial blessings, Lord God. May you pour out, Lord God, all the all their needs, Lord, especially for the financial blessings, a house of their own, Lord, and his computer, Lord, please touch everything that needs to be repaired, Lord God, so he can use it for uh, for whatever he is doing in the ministry, Lord God, for your glory, Lord. Have mercy upon Evangelist Mike, Lord, and all his family members, Lord. Please give them... Uh, Give, keep them safe, Lord, from any harm and danger. Give them a strong, uh, strong body, Lord, a strong mind, and strong. Continue to to be strong in their faith, Lord, forever. Lord, we may may we leave of Sister Margaret also who went on vacation. Please grant her your. Uh, Lord God, protection, Lord God, and guidance while she is away, and may she enjoy your your peace, Lord, the joy that's coming from you while she is on vacation. Give her a good health, especially Sister Juliet, also, Lord, who went to Diana. Uh, we pray for the salvation of her family. We pray for good health, Lord God, and may she become... Uh, uh, you're the guiding light for her family, Lord God. Please uh, give her the courage to speak about you, Lord Jesus. They need salvation, Lord God, her children, Lord God, and Diana. Lord, we also lift up to you, Sister Queen, in all her needs. Strengthen her body, Lord God. She just moved in Seattle, Washington, and now, Lord God, She's organizing everything, Lord. Please um, protect her and also her daughter, Lord God, and her grandson. Please embrace them with your love and help Sister Connie, Lord God, to to minister your word for for this beloved family of her, Lord God. May she find a good job and and bless her with. All good friends, Lord God, wherever she goes, use her, Lord God, to minister your word for to the new found friend, and may uh, may she be uh, a blessing to everybody that she will meet there, Lord God. Lord, we would like to ask also for uh, your healing touch, Lord God, to Sister Rita. 
her diabetes, Lord God, her her eyes, Lord God, which is affected, and she has pain on the ner- nerve on her feet, Lord God. Have mercy, uh, whatever financial re- needs, Lord God, please support Sister Rita, strengthen her body, strengthen her her spirit, Lord God, and may she be a blessing to all her loved ones too. We also thank you, Lord, for for the traveling mercies that you have given to those who came back from vacation, uh, Brother Manny, Lord God. Uh, thank you for the strength that you have given him. Uh, thank you for your faithfulness, Lord, in his life. We uh, we also lift up to you all those with special needs, the needs and the cry of the silent uh, hearts of those uh, silent listeners, Lord, wherever they are, in uh, here in America or in abroad, Lord God, whoever is listening, Lord, Please touch their hearts. You know what their needs are, Lord God. And we pray for all their family members, Lord, who does not, who is not saved yet, Lord God. May you reveal yourself unto them, Lord, and show the greatness of your salvation. We pray all of this, Lord, in the most precious name of Jesus, your Son, in the presence and unity of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Thank, Thank you. you very much. This is Rita. Frank. Well, who, what is your name? This is Rita. What is your name? Sister Rita. This is Sister Lila. Oh, thank God you so much for your presence. You. Very grateful. Thank you. God bless you, Sister. You. Thank you, Sister Lila. Thank you, Sister Rita. God thank bless you, everyone. Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request? Yes, I have a I have a friend of mine who um, is expecting a job. She's a translator, and um, she is expecting a job from a, a family from the Yemen, from Yemen, and um, we're praying for favor. We would ask for God's favor for her, and that God will be open unto her. And um, yes, and also my daughter, uh, we just want to just lift her up because she has a business that she's doing, and whether the Lord will continue to open doors unto her and expand her in what she's going into. So it's my daughter and my friend. Amen. Okay. Heavenly Father, we lift up to you Sister Cynthia's prayer request. First, for her friend, Lord, we pray that you would open the door for her for employment, Lord, as a translator for a Yemen family, Lord God. Lord, we pray, Lord God, that you would make a way for her, Lord. Grant her favor for a job, Lord God. And Lord, for Sister Cynthia's daughter, we pray, Lord God, for also open doors for her and her business, Lord God. Lord, we pray that you would make a way for her as well, Lord God. Lord, we entrust both these prayer requests to you, Lord God, that, Lord, you would intervene on behalf of her daughter and her friend, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank Amen. You. Thank you, Sister Claire. Thank you, Sister Thank you. Cynthia. Thank you, Sister. Anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request? Well, I like to lift up my brother again. God, he has a lungs and a place to stay, and he's doing very well. Thanks for your praise report, but he needs a place to stay permanently, and his lungs aren't the greatest. And for Charles, a homeless person, he's got a place to stay, but his mind is not right. God will heal his mind. And I have this uh, vein in my neck that's... Uh, Doctor said it's getting a little thick cholesterol. It's a carotid artery to the heart, and I'm very nervous about it. And I want God to heal that. Thank you. It's getting thick, you know, cholesterol. Thank you. May I call on um, Sister Chief? Are you on? Hello. 
Are you on, Sister Chip? Sister Lai, can we lift up uh, Sister Rita for healing for her brother? He also needs a place to stay. And Hello? Hello? Yes. Pastor, is Go it ahead. the brother's name is John? John. Uh, he needs a, play, a nursing home. And Charles is a friend. Charles, yeah. He's a... Uh, he, yeah. His mind is not right because he's a homeless guy, but he got a place to stay, but his mind is not right. God helped him to get a place to stay, but his mind is not good. God will heal him. And he has a pain in the neck. Oh, God, our loving Father, we... We... humbly ask you, Lord God, have mercy upon the brother of Sister Rita, Lord. Uh, he is suffering from, he has a lung problem, Lord God, and he's looking for uh, a nursing home, Lord, that will accept him, Lord God, with all the amenities that he needed, Lord. Um, we pray for his protection, Lord God, and may uh, you open doors, Lord God, that he He will have, uh, he will live in peace and in joy, in your joy, Lord God. And may we entrust you in, we entrust him, Lord, in your care, Lord. Uh, we we know that you we know that you will make a way for his brother, Lord God. You know what his needs are, Lord, and enlighten the heart of Sister Rita, Lord God. She is so much concerned about his brother and his friend Charles, Lord. Uh, that this is. Mr. Charles is suffering uh, pain on his neck, Lord, and also she, he has uh, some confusion, Lord, in his mind. Lord, please touch, touch him, Lord God, in the area where he needs to be healed. Lord, we, we trust you, Lord, that you will give healing and, and pull uh, uh, recovery and good health, Lord, for ailment lord we ask this lord in the most precious name of jesus amen amen thank you sister lila god bless us god bless you anybody else on the prayer line with a prayer request Sister um, Lila, can you sing to us tonight? Thy loving kindness is better than life. Thy loving kindness is better than life. My our lips shall praise thee, thus will we bless thee. We will lift up our hands unto thy name. We lift our hands, Lord, unto thy name. We lift our hands, Lord, unto thy name. Our lips shall praise thee. Thus will we bless thee. We will lift up our hands unto thy name. Safe in thy shadow, we will rejoice. Safe in thy shadow, we will rejoice. Our lips shall praise thee. Thus will we bless thee, we will lift up our hands unto thy name. Thank you, Lord. Amen, amen. Thank you, Sister Lila. Can you lift up all the prayer intercessors and also our uh, 
friends or anyone on the prayer line that is not here tonight? Heavenly Father, we lift up every prayer intercessor to you tonight, Lord God. We pray for Sister Lila, Sister Cheat, Sister Cynthia, Sister Rita, Sister Rosemary, all your prayer warriors, Lord God. We thank you for them, Lord God. And Lord, as they pray for the needs of others, Lord, we ask you, Lord God, to also intervene on their behalf, Lord. Intercede for them as well, Lord God. And Lord, for those who aren't on the prayer line, like um, Sister Juliet, Sister Connie, who moved to Washington. Lord, we continue to lift them up to you, Lord God, that whatever it is concerning them, Lord God, that, Lord, you would bless them and continue to use them mightily, Lord, for your glory and for your honor. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen, amen. amen. Anybody else on the prayer line? Father, we thank you for Jesus, whoever lives to make intercession for us, Lord God. Thank you for your spirit who makes intercession for us with groanings, which cannot be uttered, Lord God. Teach us, Lord, to be an intercessor. We want to be able to stand in the gap before you. We want to lift up others to you in prayer, faithfully interceding for them in your presence, Lord. Lord, we, when we pray, give us much grace and increase our faith le level, Lord God, that we will believe and have received what we have prayed for. Thank you, Lord, for your promise to give us the things we desire when we learn to pray effectively in faith without wavering, Lord God. We will call on you, Lord. We will give ourselves no rest, and we will give you no rest until you establish Jerusalem as a praise in the earth. Until your plans, Lord, and purposes are fulfilled and your glory covers the earth, Lord, as the waters cover the sea, we will pray and travail until Christ is fully formed in us. Let your kingdom come, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you for everyone who are here tonight, and we pray specifically for those who are away for those who need a job, those who need financial blessings, Lord God, those who are looking for apartments or a place to stay, those who are uh, asking for healing in their body, Lord God, meet, meet its need, Lord, of your people for whom we pray. We ask you, Lord, in Jesus' holy name, hallelujah, amen. Thank you, Lord, and may I call on Sister Cynthia? Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Father and our God, we, was, we come to the close, O oh Lord, of our program tonight. We want to just thank you for your presence here, Holy Spirit. We believe your word, O oh God, and your word is truth. And your word is our Savior, the Lord Jesus. Tonight, O oh Lord, we are reminded of your unfailing love, that you are God who loves us beyond our understanding. But in spite of your love, O oh God, because you love us, you do chasten us when, O oh God, when we fail to live up to the standard that is expected of us, but always in love. Always in love. That's why your love could, grace could abound over all our sins. It doesn't matter what sin we have committed. Grace, grace outmatches that sin. And so we want to just thank you for love that is expressed through your son. 
love that we cannot. Yes, that's why you say your love is agape love. Oh, God, perfect love, perfect love. And so we want to say tonight that we love you. We want to love you in return. We want you to deliver, as your servant says, to form Christ in us. Let Christ be perfectly formed in us, that we, in return now, will love you the way we ought to love you. Tonight we want to just thank you again for inclining your ear unto our prayers to you, O God. We want to just thank you, O God, for the victory. We want to just thank you for answered prayer. Lord, and we keep on thanking you, thanking you, thanking you, for you have done it. Lord, I want to just lift up for you, your daughter, O Lord, Lola, to you, O God. Lord, we thank you for your love for her, O God. We thank you for keeping her, no matter what, Lord, in all these years, oh God. Lord, you have kept her. Your love has kept her. Your love has stayed her. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we want to thank you for her granddaughter. Oh, Lord, your love is keeping her, oh God. How I pray, oh God, that she will love you fully and totally in return. No good thing which withholds from them that love you, from them that trust in you, and for them that walk sincerely with you. Oh, Father God, we need you, Lord. We need you. Can you imagine if you did not love us when we find ourselves in the situation where we're in our sick beds or we are accosted and and challenged by the enemy, oh God, and, and when we have nothing to eat, oh God, oh, or there's problems and having a roof over our heads, but your kindness, your kindness, oh God, works out for us all because of your love. And we are thanking you. We are thanking you. Repent that we don't love you. As we, are, we are careless in our love in our priority still. Help us, oh God, we pray. Help us, oh God, to look up to you, to, to, to focus on you and not on the things that bother us. Oh Lord, we want to just thank you. Thank you, oh God, for our Thank you, oh God, for your love that you will continue to share. You don't just give us testimony. Testimony for God of jobs, testimony for new housing, testimonies, oh God, unlimited, for oh, we overcome the enemy by the, by the word of our testimony and the blood of the Lamb. So we want to just thank you, oh God. We give you thanks. We praise you. We bless you. We give you thanks for our listeners again. And we thank you that we put everything in, in the situation. That some people, Lord God, we ask to do this. Give a new one, O oh Lord God. Give a new one. There's nothing impossible with you. You just gave one of your children a million dollar house. Simply because of his faithfulness. Getting out there with the world. Never expecting something like that. Having lived in places where there's rats and whatnot. But, oh God. We cried out, and you heard the cry. And when the time was right, you made a video. A house. A million dollars. And every proof is there that this has this is so. You are just great. You are great and greatly to be praised. So tonight we are praising you and thanking you for the things that we look forward to. We have not yet seen it, but we trust in your word. We believe in you and we love you. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, our Heavenly Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For it is well with our souls. We give you thanks. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Thank you, Sister Cynthia. Mm -hmm. On behalf of Glory Tabernacle, Prayer Line, and the Consuming Fire Radio Ministry, we bid you good night. God bless you all. Thank you for coming in tonight. And until we meet again on Wednesday, 
Let's worship the Lord. Good night, everyone. God bless you. Good night. God bless you. Good night. Good night. Good night, everybody. Good night, everyone.